Hello everyone, this is Harry's Movie. In this issue, let's take a look at the history of the creation of Facebook by Mark Zuckerberg, the social network. Mark was a talented programmer and was admitted to Harvard University with honors. He always spoke bluntly, speaking like a machine gun, and he never took the feelings of others into account. He only thought about his ideas, so every time the date of him and his girlfriend all broke up in Discord. Then, Mark's girlfriend got tired of this way of love and proposed to break up. After a broken relationship, Mark returned to the dormitory, drinking and posting his dissatisfaction with his girlfriend on his blog. At this time, a drunk roommate asked him casually Mark was inspired to make a website for comparing women's sexiness. As a hacker, Mark easily hacked into the schoolgirl's dormitory system. He copied all the girls' photos and made a website. Edward and Mark were close friends. He saw Mark's blog and came to comfort him when he knew his friend was broken. Edward was the one with business sense. He once made 300,000 in a summer vacation. So Mark wanted Edward to provide algorithms to complete the core part of the system. After testing, Mark quickly succeeded in making a sexy scoring system face mash. He sent it to alumni in the form of email and got a crazy spread. All of a sudden, students from the whole school were visiting this website. It directly caused the school server to crash, and even the administrator had to get up in the middle of the night for maintenance. Mark's behavior disgusted all the girls in the school, but the Winklevoss twins were very interested in Mark's talent. They invited Mark to join the team and do a big business. The Winklevoss twins were preparing to build a Harvard network that allowed students to create their homepage, interests, personal information, and photos which was the social software we use now. Their target customers were girls who liked to date Harvard boys. This was also unique that other social networking sites did not have. Mark thought this idea was great and said he would help. But now Mark had another idea in his mind. He felt that the thinking of the Winklevoss twins blind date website was too limited. Through FaceMash, he thought that people were more willing to communicate with people they knew just like Edward joined the club and wanted to get to know each other with the opposite sex and had in-depth discussions. If this social mode appeared online, it would be a particular story. This idea made Mark extremely excited. So he bought the Clavotes brothers and found his best friend Edward as a partnership. Mark contributed talent, Edward contributed money, together they made the ultimate online club. Edward thought this was a good idea, people would voluntarily give out personal information. They would invite friends to join, it was more convenient to get to know friends of the opposite sex. They decided to share 7 and 3 after it was done, Mark 7 Edward 3. Mark was in charge of all programming skills, while Edward only needed to ensure financial expenses. The two hit it off and immediately bought the server and started construction. In the days to come, the Winklevoss twins dodged that they didn't have time while Mark was writing the code day and night. And the Winklevoss twins were busy rowing races, they hadn't been too much pursued on it. On the 39th day, Mark registered a Facebook domain name. Later, he was inspired by his classmates and added an emotional state to the social system. The Facebook officially completed on the 42nd day. Mark used Edward's contacts at the club to push the website to their mailbox. Overnight, the website was popular throughout the school and everyone knew it. Even when the two of them were in class, there were girls admiringly chatting up. Two weeks later, the number of website registrations reached 4,000 users. The Winklevoss twins were extremely angry when they heard the news. They blamed Mark for stealing their creativity. They warned Mark to stop the website or they would take him to court. On the other hand, Edward thought that the website should be commercialized so that advertisers could profit. But Mark thought Facebook had unlimited potential and was invaluable. They didn't need to make fancy pop-up ads. At a party, Mark saw his ex-girlfriend. He tried to strike up a conversation and wanted to tell her that he made a great website. But the ex-girlfriend didn't give Mark any respect. She also exposed Mark's humiliation on her blog and the negative impact of FaceMash on the school girls. In her eyes, Mark played tricks and couldn't succeed. Mark left in anger, determined to expand the influence of Facebook. Mark returned to the dorm and reassigned his job. He gave up 5% of the shares to let his roommates assist in the development to promote the website to other universities. Sean was an early internet wizard. He accidentally saw this transformative website when he was picking up girls in college. Sean immediately realized that this was a project with unlimited potential. He contacted Mark according to the information on the website to meet up. But Edward thought Sean's achievements were too legendary. Not only did he start a business twice and sold the company, but he also got involved with drugs. It was probably a troublesome guy who was not a friend or an enemy. Mark had a different view, he thought if Sean could have such achievement at such a young age, he must be unique. If Mark could cooperate with him, maybe the website would develop faster. After Sean went to the appointment, he began to brag about his previous heroic deeds. He also rejected Edward's access to advertising and supported Mark's point of view. Sean conquered Mark's mind just through a meal of cowhide. He thought this was the person who really understood him. Sean let them see the longer term, they shouldn't lose the future for the petty profits in front of them. At least they had to make the website valued 1 billion. He also suggested that Mark move the company to California, which was more conducive to career development. Before leaving, Sean suggested that it would be better to remove the in-just call Facebook. 
Mark accepted all of Sean's suggestions and immediately decided to move to California during the summer vacation. Before that, Mark must compete with others to recruit two excellent interns. Edward provided $18,000 to let Mark rent an office in California. He owned an advertiser in New York. During the summer vacation, Mark met Sean when he first arrived in California. Sean was very optimistic about Mark's team and told him not to listen to Edward. He just needed to make Facebook bigger, and he would definitely win both fame and fortune. Sean encouraged Mark and promised to help him expand his popularity. These words made Mark feel good, and he decided to get enlisted at the moment. On a rainy night, Edward flew from New York to California with joy. But when the door opened, Edward saw his rival Sean and he also brought some girls here, this scene made Edward disappointed. And Mark, who only cared about work, forgot to pick Edward at the airport. For this reason, the two had a dispute. Edward was working hard every day to pull advertisers in New York. In the end, Sean crossed the line and changed the direction of the company. And Mark gradually became dissatisfied with Edward under the hint of Sean. He believed that Edward had lived for so long without seeing any effect. But the joining of Sean could attract investors and make the company grow rapidly. In this way, Edward was in a fury and went back to New York. Mark was not happy because Edward's approach was too extreme. Once the Facebook server stopped functioning, all previous efforts would be wiped out. Sean pulled investors to Silicon Valley and got 500,000 yuan in the capital and office space. Mark told Edward the news and told him to come back and sign a new equity contract. Out of trust in Mark, Edward signed the contract without letting his lawyer look at it. But it didn't take long for Edward's 30% stake to be diluted to 0.03%. His name was no longer on the co-founder column while the other people's shares remained intact. Edward walked up to Mark angrily and smashed the computer. He said, I am your only friend, but why do you treat me this way? Mark was speechless, he firmly believed that he was not a bad guy. It was Edward who signed the documents himself. At this time, Sean cut in and bluntly said that Edward did not contribute to Facebook. He wasn't a member of the team. And Sean took out a check for $19,000 that Edward had frozen. After Edward was gone, Mark yelled at Sean that he shouldn't be doing this to his friend. The only thing to be happy about was that there were more than 1 million Facebook users that night. Later, Mark was brought to court by the Winklevoss twins and Edward. After a long lawsuit, Mark settled with the Winklevoss twins with a hush fee of 50 million. And Edward's name had returned to the Facebook founder column. But no one knew how many shares Edward got. After just six years, Facebook covered 207 countries. With 500 million users, the market value was estimated at 25 billion. 26-year-old Mark became the youngest billionaire in history. After watching the movie, I was so excited that I immediately bought a VPN and applied for an account. As a result, they gave me a ban before seeing the page. Okay, this is the end of this issue. Friends who like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time.